bad debts. One of the problems that we've seen over the last 30 years, which is at the heart of what we call <coughs> neoliberalism, is indeed a proliferation of bad debt, unproductive, de uh, undemocratic, financial, speculative debt, um, leading to crises. And while I definitely agree there isn't a public debt crisis, uh, historically speaking, in the UK at the moment, there is a private debt crisis in the UK, and that's because our economy is so incredibly financialised, um, and our economy is so incredibly dependent on debt. And why does that private debt matter? Because for the last three decades, since the Mexican debt crisis of 1982, private uh, bank speculative financial debt has been transferred onto the public sector through bailouts, through new lending from institutions like the International Monetary Fund, and paid for through public austerity, privatisation, and that kind of thing. And that has led to an enormous de-development of um, the developing world, and we're now seeing exactly the same thing happening in, in uh, peripheral Europe. So mass impoverishment, um, historically unprecedented levels of inequality, and ironically, ever more debt. So these, these, uh, these so-called solutions haven't even operated in order to reduce debt burdens. When from from uh, the Mexican crisis in 1982, spread right through Latin America, debt doubled within a, within a, a decade as a result of these, um, of these austerity and, and structural adjustment policies. Um, so, you know, if you're being generous, you can say, well, you can make a mistake once. But to continue making the same mistake for three decades becomes a lot more than that. Essentially, these economic policies are crimes against humanity, given the, the, the number of lives and livelihoods affected by them. What we're calling for is a modern jubilee. This is a, ju a jubilee as a version of some a debt cancellation that used to happen in, in ancient times. Um, but what we're calling so a, a, a large part of that is evidently debt cancellation. Um, I would I would think. Uh, a small issue with um, costas in terms of calling it forgiveness, because I think that people whose debts we're, we're, we're cancelling, um, uh, we're not forgiving them, they have nothing to be forgiven for. Um, <laughs> be, be, because I think we need, we need that debt cancellation to work along the principles which we would enshrine in a, in a good economy. Um, so, so sovereignty, democracy, equality and redistribution, these principles must guide debt cancellation. The debt cancellation itself must redistribute power in society and in the world. And indeed that has happened. It's not just high in the sky in Germany after the Second World War. Many people have heard about the Marshall Plan as a means of German recovery, but actually much, much bigger than the Marshall Plan was the huge amount of debt cancellation that Germany was given in 1953 um, at the conference here in London. And that debt cancellation was not only massive, but was based on uh, a repayment scheme that would only come into effect if Germany grew. And that meant that the countries giving Germany debt cancellation, including ironically countries like Greece and Spain, um, had, a, had an, a, an inbuilt um, invested interest in rebalancing the European economy to help Germany to grow. And that debt cancellation was also seen as an equal problem for the debtors and the creditors. If Germany ever um, ran into a problem, even um, a, a, a along the lines of the repayments that it was given, it would come back and sit down as an equal partner with its creditors. We see that in that kind of model nowhere in the world today. Iceland tried it, attempted it, um, and I, I would definitely argue had a better resolution to their crisis than southern European countries are doing as a result. I also want to argue that the, the crisis that we're facing is not simply um, an economic crisis. I think the crisis is really a political crisis. In Europe today, we have a very deep um, political crisis. I think probably most people, most people would agree. And therefore, debt cancellation needs to be done in a way that puts people back in the driving seat of their economy. And that's why we're calling for these things called debt audits, which are full public disclosures of the debt to society um, involving ordinary citizens as well as government experts um, and, and, and others, um, so that society, so that we as ordinary individuals collectively can come to make democratic decisions on what we do with that debt. What, which debts do we regard as legitimate? Which debts do we regard as illegitimate? Um, a really interesting example has been, is being tried out in Ireland at the moment, and there is almost unanimity in Irish society that, for example, the bailout of Anglo Bank, Anglo Irish Bank, um, is a completely illegitimate debt. The Irish people took on the debts of a, of a bank of billionaires who used that bank to speculate, and yet they are paying tens of billions of dollars down over the next 50 years to, 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 to take on the losses of that bank and make sure that the bondholders don't lose out. That's completely illegitimate and should never have happened. Um, the only way we can stop this happening is by, is by taking back control of our economy. And we think debt audits is a good way of doing that. And we think that would lead into a whole different way of, um, of looking at 
economics. Of course, debt audits and debt cancellation on its own isn't enough. We then need to think about how we can restructure our economy. And that means progressive taxation becoming much more important as a means of financing than debt, for example. It means government controlling um, savings. And it means not just how we control banks here, but things like capital controls at an international level so that governments can regain their sovereignty to have some control over this, these incredible flows of, um, of speculative finance that, that go in and out of developing and now developed countries too. It means public uh, socialised banks, it means democratic industrial policy. So lots of things that we can look to, but these ideas, and I want to end on this, are not going to fall out of the sky. And so it isn't enough for us just to sit down and think what a good economy would look like. It's important, but not enough. Unless we actually engage in social struggle, in mobilisation, these things aren't going to happen because clearly we're confronting massive um, self-interests here. Unless we uh, look at, for example, the fact that the relationship between labour and capital has become so utterly one-sided over the last 30 years and try to redress that, these kind of policies are never actually going to happen. So we can't just, and I'd like to make sure today, if I, if, if, if I can play a role in it, that we don't just talk about the technical solutions. The how is at least as important as the what in solving these very, very deep um, political crises that we experience in the world today. Thank you.